back at the Kennedy Space Center and the uh, Columbia Space Shuttle has been uh, in orbit now for quite some time, left the pad more than 41 minutes ago. And of course, it is exciting to watch it on television, but uh, naturally, it's much more exciting to be here and to see it. And Jack Curtis, who has been standing by at Titusville, about 13 miles or so away, is with a uh, lady who apparently uh, has seen more than one of these uh, space missions. Jack? Frank, the wind is rising here at Titusville, and the very rather small but enthusiastic crowd has largely gone home. Many of the people who were here were here a week ago and uh, went away disappointed. Those who returned, of course, are very happy. And one of the happiest is Mrs. Lillian Wilson. She has witnessed every manned space launch since 1961. Mrs. Wilson, how did you like today's? Very, very good. Mm -hmm. Now, you remember actually following the Lindbergh flight across the Atlantic on your radio, is that correct? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So we'd have to put you down as a real aerospace fan. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, when you watched Richard Truly and Joe Engel go up today, what did you want to say to them? God bless you. God bless you. Yes. Great. Frank? Oh, thank you very much, Jack. And thank you, Mrs. Wilson. Indeed, that's what everybody felt, I believe, as we watched the giant bird lift off and realized... Uh, the momentous mission that these men were undertaking, despite the fact that everybody talks about uh, how it becomes, oh, not yet routine, but all the training and so forth, still it's quite a moment when you realize they're sitting on top of all that volatile fuel and uh, riding a bomb, uh, it's about what it is, really, up into space. We do get back, to, uh, not just the shuttle and the astronauts, but we also get back the uh, SRVs, the solid rocket boosters, and we'd like to replay for you, if we can now, the separation of the solid rocket boosters because uh, this happened uh, only about two minutes after launch, two minutes and seven seconds to be precise, and you'll see them fall away. Their primary mission is to get the bird off the pad, and they do that in a spectacular way. Those are the largest solid rocket boosters ever built, as far as we know, in the world. The thing about them, too, is once you put them to the torch, they go. There's no way to control them, is there? When, once, once you light the fire, it's going to keep burning. There's the separation. First. And they went together. And they fall down into the Atlantic and uh, are recovered. As a matter of fact, the two SRVs from the first shuttle last April uh, were recovered uh, very shortly after they came uh, down. And Al Dale has a report now on just how we go about getting these uh, two SRBs, valuable pieces of equipment, back for use again. Part of what makes the space shuttle unique is that most of its components, including its two solid rocket boosters, can be reused. The boosters, called SRBs, exhaust their fuel two minutes and seven seconds after launch at an altitude of approximately 27 nautical miles. At that point, exploding bolts will separate the boosters from the still-climbing Columbia orbiter, and they will begin to fall back to Earth. The largest parachutes ever made will slow their descent. Still, they'll come down fast, hitting the surface of the Atlantic at about 60 miles an hour some 160 miles east of Cape Canaveral. Air trapped inside the boosters as they hit will ensure that they float at an upright position, something like bottles bobbing in open water. Transmitters on the boosters will send out homing signals, which will be followed by two privately owned recovery vessels. The two SRBs will tip over and float horizontally. In that position, they can be towed to shore like logs for use on yet another shuttle mission. 45 minutes and 10 seconds into the mission and all goes well. The uh, communications established uh, with the uh, spacecraft uh, reflect the belief of everybody, I guess, that uh, things are continuing to function properly and they really have had no uh, serious problems, Gene. So our coverage of uh, Space Shuttle Columbia will continue in a moment.